Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. Welcome to another episode of Bob the Science Guy. You know, one of the great things about being in the debunker community is there are so many good creators out there and we all seem to get along pretty well and we try and support each other once in a while. I'm going to do that with two creators today. The first one is going to be my friend in Germany, Sly Sparkane. Sly seems to be falling upon troubled times right now, and I'd like to offer some support. So, in honor of Sly, I just want to announce my new hobby. I'm going to have a very close look at this gentleman. I'm going to look at all of his videos and dissect them in my meticulous detail, so long as Sly continues to have his problem. Now, occasionally you get to do a twofer. And that's what I'm going to do today. So in addition to helping out my friend Sly, I want to introduce this gentleman, Carlos, Mr. Gadget. Mr. Gadget is a constant feature on a lot of the talk shows, like uh, Jose J.G. Gonzalez. Always adds really good information. He is uh, very familiar with satellites. And as you can see, he's got a small channel here, but he's got some really good material. And if possible, let's see whether or not maybe we can double that number of subscriptions and encourage him to do a few more videos. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's take a look at a few more reasons to doubt NASA and there are thousands. So first let's watch this astronaut on the moon. Astronauts to the moon. <laughs> Thank you, I completely agree Dan Aykroyd. Look at his shadow here. It's on his right, or our right which means that the sun would be to the left. Now, here's a pan to the right. This is not edited or spliced. The camera is just panning to the right, but now his shadow is straight ahead, or rather about 1 o'clock. Get a little zoom here. He does a little dance. Now he starts moving again. We pan to the right, and his shadow is now on the left. This is uh, what the French call impossible. Actually, that's what psychologists and those of us that actually know how to analyze photos call Dunning-Kruger. But I'll let Carlos point this out for you. It is a total joke. It is a fraud. Well, Carlos obviously had some problems with this and called in to Jaron's show a few days later. I'm going to let Jaronism and Carlos have their conversation and just demonstrate how badly Jaronism misunderstands this problem and how, in reality, this proves that this was done on the moon rather than on a movie set. I put out a video uh, called uh, The Cosmonaut that um, slammed the Flat Earth Theory. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I, yeah, I, I've... Uh... Okay, so when, when I showed the the guy on the moon with the shadows, how do you explain that? It, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible to explain, yet... No, no, no. You didn't let me answer. Okay, go ahead. You didn't let me answer. Um, because it's impossible uh, to explain does, that. Does that, does that. Does that prove there was multiple lighting? Or that there was... I mean, that that doesn't really, you know... Well, it does, but it, NASA, the way NASA it, has the said... The to me is that he went from the left side of the, of, the, of the rover to the front and then to the right. And therefore, yeah, the shadow would have changed. I mean, that's that's what it looked like to me. Wait, it looked like what? It looked like, uh, you know, at first the shadow was 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 going, let's say, from from right to left, right? No, from uh, from left to right, and then then he moved, and then the shadow was uh, going backwards from the camera was, and then the, the the astronaut moved a little more, and then the shadow was going from right to left, right? Yeah, the shadow switched from one side to the other. Right, but that's because you know. Probably the, the orientation of the camera was the, the astronaut went from the left side of the camera and it went in front and then around to the right side of the camera. That's what I look like to me. But you know. Okay, I mean, so okay, so tell me, tell me this, just I want to see what you're saying. So, in order for the shadow to go from left to right, correct? Yeah, well, it started. It started from left to right. From the okay, so where where would the sun be there? Now, as you can tell, Carlos has explained how this shadow would occur, but Jaronism seems very confused as to how this could happen. So they ended up actually drawing some pictures. Let's have a look at those. So um, if, if we're talking about, um, you're saying that the camera guy is here, okay, or the camera. When I, when I, and it probably was on the, on, on the rover, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's just one of those stationary cameras, but, I mean, it could be on the rover. But... Yes. And then right. we have the astronaut here, and the shadow is going 
this way. So this this tells me that the sun must be over here, right? Uh, bear, bear with me just a little bit of sure. delay. And so there's I'm a delay. starting to draw right now. Then the astronaut moves to uh, to his right, and so goes here. And the ast- now the shadow is straight on with him, almost like this. And then he moves further to his right, and the shadow goes the other way. So I don't understand how this works with the sun. Now, as you can see, these shadows would make absolutely no sense. But rather than try and make them fit so that they do make sense, he's going to put this up. But let's see if Carlos gets them squared away. Go ahead and draw the sun uh, parallel to, to the little blue thing, which is the camera, right? Okay. I mean, it really is further back, so the, 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 the shadows are parallel. Um, let's just assume that it's there, but, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be parallel anyway. Um, so where's the, where do I put the sun? Um, uh, put it at uh, 9 o'clock. Okay, so or, this, yeah. this becomes the sun. Okay. All right, so then the sun is at 9 o'clock. All right. So then the, the astronaut, the, 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 first, the, the beginning of the astronaut is sitting like right at 12, uh, between, you know, 12 and 11. Then it moves to like where 2 o'clock is. I'm sorry, where four, four and a half is. And it goes all the way down to 6 o'clock or probably 7. Okay. And, and that's where I go to the conclusion of, of saying he went around like a U shape in front of the, uh, in front of the camera. And the, the, the camera just kind of. So the, sh- the shadows, him. the shadows yeah. would do this. Now, do you see the problem that we're running into? Do you remember the video that I put out the other day on dyscalculia? The inability to visualize geometry? The problem that Jaron is running into here is that he's got the sun over there at 9 o'clock, and he assumes that it is right there nearby at 9 o'clock, like a movie light. So he draws the shadows directly away from that light. Now, Carlos made it very clear that the light from the sun was coming in in parallel, and the shadows would be in parallel. But let's let him go ahead and actually build a model of this and show us. But what, what, what happened in that video is the shadow went the other direction. So how... I understand this. Yes, you get this shadow, you get this shadow, you get this shadow. How is it that the shadow went the other direction? meaning it started on his left side and completely switched to the right side. I do feel the need to interject and help Jaron out a little bit. You realize that you turned around 180 degrees, right? What was his right is now his left. Okay? Just try and visualize that, okay? It, it, it doesn't... It, I, I, don't, I don't get it unless the sun is moving or... Maybe I'm just not, um, you know, I'll draw some... Hi, my name is Carlos Pagan, and I'm making this video in response to Jaron Campabella from Jaronism. Now, Jaron has been doing Flat Earth research for quite a while, and uh, recently, on one of his live broadcasts on YouTube, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, talk to him on the phone. On that phone conversation we had, he brought up uh, some footage that he has some questions uh, about, and the footage was uh, one of the Apollo missions, one of the astronauts is walking in front of the uh, lunar rover and the footage is from the lunar rover's camera and he, as, he, as the astronaut moved around uh, the shadow seemed to have changed uh, too much uh, according to how much the camera have moved and basically the uh, shadow angles did not match up or, or didn't seem to match up and um, so he said, if anybody has a clue or if somebody can model this to explain it better, um, please do so. Uh, so basically, Carlos is going to build this lunar rover out of cardboard and toothpicks. Uh, very meticulous work. I applaud him for doing so. As you can see in this picture here, you have the seats, and then you have the camera, and beside the camera you have the antenna, high gain antenna. And we're going to place the camera and the antenna in that orientation so we can get as close as possible to the original. All right, so here's my setup. I have the rover model that I built out of cardboard right here. I have a little servo 
with a small uh, USB camera uh, connected to it, which uh, feeds uh, a video to my cell phone here. You can see the little astronaut there. So I got this little toy right here from a little $5 toy set so I can have at least something close to the real thing. And I try to make the uh, rover the same scale as that. Uh, you know close to it so uh, I match the antenna high gain antenna and the camera's location so we could get you know uh, like I said as close to it as possible so got my little servo tied into a radio receiver uh, got here just the ESC uh, which is, I'm just using this to convert the uh, the uh, 3s uh, uh, 12 volts to 5 volts and then I got to tie into this radio here and I got this channel from the servo into this potentiometer here so as I turn the potentiometer the camera turns Carlos you have way too much time on your hands but that is an impressive setup uh, but like I said the feed is going from this camera to my cell phone here and you can see the little man right there and I can record to my cell phone here I'm also putting some sand down so I can get some irregularities on the on the floor on the ground you know it's this kind of attention to detail that makes Carlos a really good debunker you guys ought to take a moment and go ahead and subscribe to his channel real quick I have a flashlight across the room emulating the sun and it's shining over here where my model is got the shadows just about right um, I do uh, I did check make sure that all the shadows uh, from either side were uh, for the most part for the most part parallel so that could be consistent for the experiment all right so I got the footage here and I got my uh, camera filming the model and I'm looking at my uh, my small uh, camera from the rover and I'm gonna play a little bit of the original footage and show you that uh, where I have the shadows matched okay uh, so you can see our guy here he, and he's got the shadow right there uh, about 90 degrees from where he's standing to, to the floor like that and then basically level with the camera um, you can see here it's just level with the camera as well and I think he's right about here all right and I'm gonna turn the radio on so we can get the camera ready to roll and you see as soon as I start turning my camera um, I get the antenna high gain antenna uh, in the frame so I'm not gonna move the camera until right before that part so I'm gonna play the footage and he's playing with his instrument there I'm gonna pause it right there he starts going out of frame but right here I'm gonna play a little more uh, he starts going about right here and I play a little more okay and at this point I think he's right about here all right something like that a little further back so I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna start uh, panning the camera let's see to try to match the footage like I said and we get that antenna on the frame out of frame keep rolling keep rolling and it stops right there all right so maybe bring him a little more this way like this all right there we go all right so at this point i think he's kind of around this area um i believe i matched the camera movements pretty close you can see his shadow is behind him um just like it is on the original footage um i'm gonna play the footage again and as i see fit i'm gonna start moving the uh the figurine here the astronaut um i think my the guy's a little bit closer to the camera i'm gonna put a little further back um, but just keep an eye on the uh, on the shadow there. All right, just a little further back. You can see in the other camera here. I moved the further back. All right, now 
when I hit play, uh, well actually it, it goes a little more to the right like this and I hit play again and you see that the camera really doesn't pan anymore. Now I'm going to go a little further. Let's see, play a little more. That's kind of where it stays. So you can see right there, let me clear out more of the, that the shadows are matching the footage. Um, and now it's going to the left. So we started from left to right and now we ended with uh, the shadow going from right to left of the screen. Um, and as I said before, that's that's what I believe happened. Uh, I, that's, I believe that's, that was the movement of the astronaut. You know, I think that Carlos did a fantastic job with this video and is well worth a sub. But I think one of the telling points is this diagram from Jared. This has to do with Jared's mental picture of this. He is imagining this as a movie set and can't seem to see it in any other way. That's why when we drew the light source at 9 o'clock, he had that as a local light source. And as you can see, the shadows would diverge from that local light source. Whereas if this was in space, the light source would be extremely distant, the sun. And the shadows, as Carlos pointed out, would be parallel. Let's go ahead and do a quick experiment and see what that looks like. So I went into a dark room and put up three objects and I shined a light on them from different distances. Now on the bottom, you'll see the light source very close. Notice the figurines on the left and the right. The one on the left, the light source goes directly away from us. The one on the right, you see how it angles out towards the edge of the frame? Now, if you look at the same figurines with a light source much further away, you notice how the shadows are a lot more parallel. Both the, both the side figurines, the light sources have come in, and the reference weight in the middle, the light source is straight back. This demonstrates the difference between a nearby light source and a very distant light source. And what we're seeing on the moon is a very distant light source, as one would expect on the moon with the light source being the sun. This is not a movie set. Thank you very much, Jaron, for proving that. Well, guys, thank you for stopping by and stop by and see my friend Carlos. The link is in the description. Give him a sub. If we can get him another four or five hundred subs, I bet you we could convince him to do some good videos on satellites. In the meantime, Jaronism, remember that name above my head. As long as he has a problem, you're going to be my new hobby. So, signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you for stopping by, and remember to hit a little like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. Take care, guys.